Stocks are down for three weeks in a row. And in this video, we're going to talk about where is the Federal Reserve's potential U-turn going to first happen? We'll talk about that in this video and I'll explain my reasons why. Keep that in mind though, this is different. A U-turn is different from a pivot where they sort of reduce the, the level of rate increases that they're handling. A U-turn is where's that potential full Fed, we're good. And that's what we want to try to understand a little bit more of in this video. I do want to mention though, while stocks are down three weeks in a row, and it seems like every single day, the only movement we see in the stock market is down, 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 and it just gets worse and worse and worse as we go through December and the tax loss harvesting season here. What does that actually remind us of? Well, I don't know what it reminds you of, but it reminds me of sitting right here in the same spot last year in November of 2021 during the crazy euphoric bull market. And I'm looking up at Sarah Eisen, and you know what she said day after day after day? New record highs on the S&P 500. That does it for me on the closing bell. Over and over and over. Well, that's one week in a row of record highs. That's two weeks in a row of record highs. That's three weeks in a row of record highs. Now, we're at three weeks in a row of down, 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 down. And hopefully, now hope, remember, is not an investing strategy, but hopefully, that means it's time to break the trend here soon and we start seeing some green when we get into January. But, and we are not at record lows on the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, so keep in mind that is a little bit different. But that three week in a row thing, something I'm paying attention to. So, what's the first thing that we have to know about the Federal Reserve to understand what turned them dirty? After all, we got two CPI reports in a row that were bullish. They came in below expectations. Inflation's rotating down. This is great. So what the hell, Fed? Why'd you have to be so mean? What'd they do? Well, what they did was they gave us a summary of economic projections that were a lot more hawkish than we were hoping they would be. Specifically, they indicated the economy would be closer to recession with GDP close to zero. And they indicated a substantially higher Fed funds rate than we were expecting. I was personally thinking they'd go to like a 4.9 here and ended up going with a 5.1. So pretty aggressive. And some are now thinking that the Fed has gone so far that the next summary of economic projections could be the start of signaling the U-turn. So when does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen on December 27th. What happens on December 27th is actually the expiration of the coupon code for the programs on Building Your Wealth link down below. That's just in a few days. We'll also be releasing a lot of new lectures before the end of the year, which is really exciting in stocks and psychology money and specifically the real estate investing course because I think there are gonna be some great opportunities to buy real estate next year. Join me in the course member live streams as well. Every day the market is open. Check those out and get lifetime access linked down below. It's the only sponsor for our channel. So what do we have over here? Well, this is a kind of chart that I threw together. Right now we're sitting over here, December 22nd, December 23rd, right? We're, we're in a pretty uh, bearish environment right here. I think we could almost go ahead and just color this in and say, you know what? December, we probably just have to write off as painful. But I made this uh, black mark right here for January 1st to indicate that I believe on January 1st, we're going to get something known as a defeatism check. And this is where the era of tax loss harvesting ends right here. And we should hopefully see the people who tax loss harvested start buying back in in January. That is for those who tax loss harvested in December. Some people tax loss harvested in November though, and they haven't come back yet. At least it doesn't feel that way, right? So I believe January 1 and really January through about Feb 1 is going to mark a defeatism check. Of course, these will be uh, sort of touched on or, or uh, you know, these might move based on the January 6th jobs data and January 12th CPI report. But I think January is going to be a big tell. Usually most retail sells in December, most retail buys in January. And remember, most of the stock market gains for a year actually happen between November and May of the year. This is why the saying sell in May and go away came up. So. This is going to be a pr critical, critical period here, this chart that I've drawn. But there are some reasons, in my opinion, to believe that the color of the pain changes. While I have hope for January, I have the most hope that as long as we get along expectations, jobs, and CPI reports, in Feb 1, we might start getting some hints 
that if Jerome Powell were to remake his summary of economic projections, he might potentially actually reduce them instead of increase his projections. That would be a critical point for the market to say, oh wow, this could be the beginning of a Fed U-turn, just like when we actually get the next summary of economic projections, which occurs on March 22nd. Mark your calendar for March 22nd. The stars here representing the Fed meeting. March 22nd is going to be very interesting because we have gotten summary of economic projection time after time over the last year that has done nothing but this. It's gotten worse. It's gotten, uh, and, and we get like a worse, there we go. Worse, worse, worse. It's always gotten worse. And March 22nd, because they've gone so high on this last SCP report that set off this three-week bear market here in December. They've gone so high that it's possible March 22nd, we could finally see that, the inflection point. Now that's too soon to say that's the Fed U-turn, right? The Fed U-turn is usually when the Fed starts cutting, but markets could try to start pricing in the actual Fed U-turn if the Fed says, hey, actually, you know what? We're starting to talk about cuts in 2023. Hey, actually, you know what? Inflation is behaving better than expected. Wage inflation is turning over, right? This is the the, the hopium uh, potential here. And we wanna be careful that it might not happen. If inflation comes in bad, we could just continue to get more aggressive SEP, more aggressive SEP. But I don't think so because now leading data suggesting commodities next year could be down as much as 20%. We've got a little bit of an oil rally here happening today. Oil is up about 3%, which is not great. We'd like to see energy come down that permeates through the entire economy. But we're better than where we were last month. We'll see if that can continue to trend down. Uh, and we've, we've got suggestions that that rental inflation is really going to give us downward pressure in Q2 and Q3. In fact, Goldman and most forecasters are suggesting in Q2 and that's April, May, June, that's when we're really going to see those moves down in rental inflation. JP Morgan suggesting the biggest gap down could actually end up coming uh, in Q3. And graphically from Citi, that's kind of what this looks like over here. You've got owner's equivalent rent going to the moon here, but median uh, uh, sales prices of existing homes and sort of rental inflation is uh, projected uh, to rotate down here with an 18 month a lag, or I should say uh, the owner's equivalent rents are expected to follow the, uh, either leading rental data or existing home sales down by about 18 months. And so we would hope that by Q2, we get a nice drop like this. Q3, we get our next drop down. And that could be a big anchor down for inflation, especially since shelter is about a 30% weight, uh, about a 32% weight for CPI, about a 25% weight for PCE. We just had PCE numbers today that were, you know, kind of at expectations and in some areas actually slightly a little bit hotter, but we still haven't actually seen that rental disinflation yet. And so that's going to be a big factor here. So if we can get this SEP inflection point, I believe the market might try to start pricing in a U-turn. And that's where I think we can get to a little bit of a better market starting really in Q2. Now, can we get, can we pass this defeatism check over in January? In my opinion, that's going to be critical. Will we pass that defeatism check? Because if people don't come back to the market, then there is this risk that people just resign and retail ends up selling and capitulating. That ends up marking the bottom and they don't come back. They do what my dad did in 2008, right? It's like November of 2008, that's it, can't take it anymore, sells out his 401k at the bottom and never stays part of the recovery. Look, stocks are painful in the short term, right? They go they go up like crazy, then they go down and you see your net worth go woo, 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 like crazy, it's insane. But in the long term, everything ends up working out. You know, as long as the companies you're investing in don't end up going bankrupt, it generally just ends up working out. So uh, I like paying attention to this. We can mark some of these dates here, but what else do we have? We have something that's actually playing into the Fed's hand right now. 10-year treasury yields are rising again. See this right here? As of the Fed's meeting, we've started seeing an increase in the 10-year treasury. I actually have a belief that it's quite likely 
10-year Treasury yields are going to stay around 3.5% for quite a while. Uh, that would actually be more like right there. They'll stay around that level or above there for quite a while. And this is why I've started closing some of my dollar short positions because the dollar short works really well when treasury yields plummet. I don't know if we're going to see uh, those low treasury yields anytime soon, at least not until the Federal Reserve really starts cutting. And even then, think about it, if we don't cut until the Fed gets to 4.75, we're still well above the 10-year treasury yield here, right? The Fed could cut a whole percent, and then we're still just in line with the 10-year treasury where it is now. And so my expectations are that leads to more pain for the real estate market. So actually, if we jump over to this chart right here, in a weird way, this chart is actually flip-flopped for the real estate market. And that is that right now, we're actually probably just in the yellow phase for the real estate market. And we're more likely to see the orange phase over in this region here. And we're more likely to see red over in this region uh, for real estate. And that's because real estate is so much slower to react. And so this is where I really, really, right here, May, June, this is my hope and it's my plan uh it could be wrong we'll see i always like to to at least make a prediction so that way if things change at least i know what's changing and then i can revise my expectations right but my expectation is that if stocks do end up moving better by the second quarter of next year then i can move into real estate at a larger pain point in my opinion, that's the best time to invest into house hack, not personal financial advice. I'm talking about myself, okay? That's potentially the best time because then I could maybe trim a little bit from gained positions in stocks and move those into house hack. That's probably, by then we should have our reg A live as well. So that could be a really opportune time. That does mean though, you have to get through this pain over here first and the uncertainty of what's going to happen with the Fed. And if I am wrong, then here's how this chart actually looks if I'm wrong, okay? So let's say I'm wrong, because it's possible I'm wrong, right? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being too hopeful. What if we end up having red all the way through Q3 of 2023? And then we actually get our orange in the stock market. And then we actually get our yellow in the stock market. And we don't actually get our green in the stock market until maybe... Q1 2024, right? That's possible. That sounds really terrible and painful, but it's possible. In this case, I would not expect the pain for the real estate market to really turn orange yet until the end of Q, uh, the end of 2023 or the beginning of, uh, of 2024. So for me, it doesn't really matter where that U-turn happens. Where does that flip happen? But in my opinion, that flip happens in a very clear way. Stocks hit bottom, start U-turning, and then real estate hits bottom. Whether that happens uh, and real estate hits a bottom in, in the summer of 23 or in the beginning of 2024 or even later, when it happens, it doesn't matter because I'm not making moves right now that says, oh, I have to be right about the real estate uh, situation right now. We're going to wait. We're going to get that confirmation from the Fed before we do anything. But that kind of overlay is what I'm expecting. And I'm looking for that inflection on the SEP for the next real level of bullishness. And unfortunately, that's not until March 22nd. I hate to say it, but that's, that's three months away. Jan, Feb, March. That sucks. We're at December 23rd now. Now, could there be bullishness between now and then? Sure more CPI data that comes down. But really, this is a time of patience. And patience doesn't bode well if you're in margin, right? It doesn't do you good if you're in margin. It doesn't do you good if you're short-term speculating. So buckle up, pay attention to what's going on in the market, pay attention to the summaries I provide in the channel. If you want to do fundamental analysis with me and uh, learn, do fundamental analysis either on real estate or, or stocks in the course member live streams, join those. You want to learn about the new lectures and 
strategies for how to identify that bottom in real estate, how to take advantage of that bottom in real estate, well, make sure you, you, take, you, you watch those new lectures coming out. Uh, remember, anytime you buy, you get lifetime access. You get all the new lectures that come out in the future. So check out that coupon code. Next one expires on the 27th of, de uh, of December here. And uh, that is the holiday coupon code, holidays. And we'll see you in the next one. Remember, email me at kevin at meetkevin.com if you want a holiday delivery of a, a course uh, for a friend or something like that, or if you need a custom bundle. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.